God Save the Great Lost Kinks album by Stephen P. Rogenmoser, read by the author. Ah, yes, the Great Lost Kinks album. It's easy to imagine this could have been the second disc of the Village Green Preservation Society had it been released as a double album. Based on the strength of the Kinks songs recorded around 1968, it's quite plausible the abandoned Four More Respected Gentlemen album would have been nearly as good as Village Green. The selection of songs on the Great Lost Kinks album are a strong statement, even as a hodgepodge release five or more years after many of these tracks were recorded and or lost. In their prime, the Kinks, much like Bob Dylan, had unreleased songs that are as good, if not better, than the material that was officially released around the same time. Till Death Do Us Part, Lavender Hill, Misty Water, Mr. Songbird, Pictures in the Sand, and The Way Love Used to Be are as strong as anything on Village Green, and for that matter, any of the Kinks' finest albums. My only complaint is that Days was not included here. It's a great single that deserved a spot on an album. But I wasn't there to make such decisions for the Kinks or their various record companies. There is contentious debate on the exact song selection presented on the Great Lost Kinks album. Many alternate track listings and rumored bootlegs are floating around the Great Lost blogs of the internet. Then there's my prized 3CD deluxe edition of Village Green that contains many of these songs as bonus tracks. I'm still quite thankful, however, that Reprise released this official version of The Lost Album. There's something intriguing about the idea of a lost album. What if the Beatles or the Rolling Stones had a lost album? But only a group as enigmatic and underfunded as the Kinks would have such sunken treasures. The Kinks were often forced to record in the wee small graveyard shift of the midnight to six hours during this period of their career as dictated by their record company, Pi. The Beatles and the Stones didn't have such issues because they could command however much studio time they wished for, but they, unsurprisingly, don't have a great lost album like this one. Their best ideas were released fairly close to the time they were recorded. My copy of the Great Lost Kinks album was sitting high on a shelf at Monster Music in Charleston. This happens to be one of my favorite record stores, where I've spent countless hours sacrificing meals for albums during my younger days when I worked at a newspaper and lived on an income just slightly above the official poverty line. Perhaps my priorities were twisted, but I look back fondly on those days, even though the sight of this album haunted me for months during my weekly visits to the record store, just hanging there collecting dust, itching to be loved, played. I hoped it would hold out for me, and I would be the one to someday take its treasured sounds home to my apartment stereo. I envied this $25 album. That was a lot for me then. And mind you, this was a time when many a great album could still be plucked from a thrift store bin for 50 cents to a dollar. But this one was special, and never to be found in thrift stores. I felt like I was in an alternate version of Wayne's World, lusting after that elusive white Stratocaster of No Stairway Infamy. I eventually picked it up during a discount sale. Maybe it was Record Store Day or Used Vinyl Saturday. But oh yes, it would now be mine. I have not seen another copy of this record in person before or since. Its scarcity is a major part of its allure. This wonderful piece of wax was released sometime in 1973, about four years after most of these songs were recorded. Much like the Kinks albums of the late 60s, this one didn't sell many copies, a truly shameful oversight on behalf of the record-buying populace of 1973. Then somehow I too became just such an imbecile and buried my copy in a pile of albums that was lost from my memory for a few years after a handful of cross-country relocations. Maybe I'd lost my enthusiasm for such music during that extremely dark time when I inadvertently lost contact with my inner circle of creative friends who understood this kind of music. Or perhaps I'd become subconsciously jaded by all the internet forums discussing the proper and 
oh so much better track listings. But that's all speculation working against something that is already spectacular. It was such a joy when I eventually found it and immediately gave it my fullest attention during a cozy sit-down listening session on a quiet evening. One thing that really stood out is that Reprise included I'm Not Like Everybody Else, a great song that happened to be the B-side of Sunny Afternoon from 1966, making it the oldest song here. But from what I've read, the idea of Village Green was born sometime in 1966. It's hard to grasp now, more than 50 years later, that the Kinks recorded their Something Else album before turning their full attention to the songs that would become Village Green. Perhaps those ideas needed more time in the concept album incubator. Nobody seems to know why the Kinks never finished four more respected gentlemen. The mystery adds to the oddness of the great lost album. And I get it, as a songwriter myself, that after a while, the fire of a fresh idea can turn to cold ashes. Once a song or a group of songs is no longer fresh, a new batch of songs can come in and wash away the old ones like grains of sand vanishing under a wave. Maybe Ray Davies thought that nobody would care if the Kinks never released another brilliant record. Ray was known to be somewhat temperamental, especially in this era, given the great songs he was writing and their failure to chart or sell. At any rate, this is my favorite era of the Kinks. I like the more introspective songs as much as the brazen early rockers. It's yin and yang. The band was maturing as Ray Davies was turning the ripe old age of 24 while writing many of these songs. The lyrics of Till Death Do Us Part easily sum up my feelings toward the album. I simply ask that you do yourself a favor and give it a listen if you haven't in a while, or maybe just think about where you left your copy.